Catherine Parr, the sixth wife of Henry VIII. In the annals of history, few names evoke as much fascination and intrigue as that of Henry VIII, the notorious King of England who reigned from 1509 to 1547. His tumultuous reign was marked by political turmoil, religious upheaval, and six marriages, each with a unique tale. Among these six wives, Catherine Parr, the sixth and final queen of Henry VIII, stands out as a remarkable and resilient figure. Her life was a testament to her intelligence, religious convictions, and ability to navigate Tudor court politics as treacherous waters. Chapter 1 The Early Life of Catherine Parr Catherine Parr was born in 1512, during the early years of Henry VIII's reign. She was the daughter of Sir Thomas Parr, a prominent and wealthy landowner, and Maud Green, a well-educated and cultured woman. Catherine's upbringing was unusual for a girl of her time, as her parents believed strongly in the importance of education for their sons and daughters. Catherine demonstrated a keen intellect and a thirst for knowledge from a young age. She received a humanist education, a rare privilege for a woman in the 16th century. She was well-versed in Latin, French, and Italian and studied literature, philosophy, and theology. These early years of education would later serve her well as she navigated the complex world of Tudor court politics. Catherine's life was tragic when she lost her mother, Maud Green, at five. Her father, Sir Thomas Parr, eventually remarried, and Catherine's stepmother, Catherine Neville, played a significant role in her upbringing. Catherine Parr's family was well-connected, and she was distantly related to several noble families, including the powerful Neville family. Chapter 2, Marriage to Sir Edward Burrow At the age of 17, Catherine Parr entered her first marriage with Sir Edward Burrow, a member of the gentry. Her father likely arranged this marriage for political and social reasons. Catherine and Edward had a son, but the child died in infancy. Tragically, Edward Burrow also passed away in 1533, leaving Catherine a widow at the age of 21. As a young widow, Catherine Parr returned to her family's estate, where she continued her pursuit of knowledge and immersed herself in religious study. She was deeply influenced by the Reformation, a religious movement sweeping through Europe and challenging the authority of the Catholic Church. Catherine's religious beliefs would become a central aspect of her life and identity. Chapter 3, Marriage to John Neville Catherine's second marriage occurred in 1534 when she wed John Neville, the third Baron Latimer. This union was another politically motivated marriage, as John Neville was a prominent nobleman with substantial estates. Catherine became the Lady Latimer and managed her husband's household and estates. During her marriage to John Neville, Catherine Parr had two stepchildren, a daughter named Margaret and a son named John. She cared for them as if they were her own, providing them with the same education and cultural enrichment she had received as a child. Catherine's role as a stepmother allowed her to exercise influence and authority within the household, an experience that would prepare her for her future role as queen. Chapter 4 the royal court and marriage to Henry VIII. In 1542, Catherine's husband, John Neville, passed away, making her a widow for the second time. By this point, Catherine had gained a reputation as a cultured and intelligent woman, and her beauty was also well known. Her combination of intellect and allure would eventually bring her to the attention of King Henry VIII. In 1543, Henry VIII needed a new queen. His fifth wife, Catherine Howard, had been executed for adultery, and the king was again searching for a suitable spouse. Catherine Parr was selected as Henry's sixth and final wife at 31. The prospect of becoming the Queen of England was both an honor and a dangerous undertaking. Henry VIII had earned a notorious reputation for his treatment of his previous wives. Two had been divorced, two had been executed, and one had died in childbirth. Catherine Parr was keenly aware of the risks but accepted the king's proposal. On July 12, 
1543, Catherine Parr and Henry VIII were married in a private ceremony at Hampton Court Palace. The new queen was described as being graceful and good-looking by those who attended the wedding. Catherine's marriage to Henry VIII marked a turning point in her life as she stepped onto the grand stage of Tudor court politics. Chapter 5, Queen Catherine Parr Chapter 5, Queen Catherine Parr As Queen Consort, Catherine Parr took on the official title of Queen of England and Ireland. She was the first Queen of England to be officially crowned as such, a testament to her place as Henry VIII's legitimate wife. Catherine Parr's role as queen was multifaceted. She was expected to be a loving wife to the king and a political figurehead. She navigated the complex world of the Tudor court with skill and diplomacy. Despite the dangers that came with the role, Catherine was determined to positively impact the court and the religious landscape of England. One of Catherine Parr's most significant contributions as queen was promoting religious reform and reconciliation. She held strong Protestant beliefs and used her position to protect and support those who shared her faith. She also played a crucial role in reconciling Henry VIII with his daughters, Mary and Elizabeth, who had been declared illegitimate during previous marriages. Catherine Parr's influence extended beyond religious matters. She patronized the arts and supported the work of scholars and writers. She authored several books, including Prayers and Meditations and Lamentations of a Sinner. These writings reflected her deep religious convictions and intellectual interests. Chapter 6, The Religious Climate of the Tudor Era To understand Catherine Parr's impact as queen, it is essential to grasp the religious climate of the Tudor Era. The 16th century was a time of significant religious upheaval in Europe. The Protestant Reformation, sparked by Martin Luther's criticisms of the Catholic Church, led to new religious movements and challenges to the Pope's authority. In England, the religious landscape was particularly turbulent. Henry VIII's decision to break with the Catholic Church and establish the Church of England, with himself as its head, was a profound and controversial step. This schism, known as the English Reformation, had far-reaching consequences for the nation's religious identity. During Catherine Parr's time as Queen, England was still transitioning from Catholicism to Protestantism. Religious debates and conflicts were commonplace, and individuals with differing beliefs faced persecution. As a devout Protestant, Catherine Parr used her position to advocate for religious tolerance and reform. Chapter 7, Catherine Parr's Religious Reforms Catherine Parr's religious beliefs were at odds with the traditional Catholicism of the era. The writings of Protestant theologians such as Martin Luther and Thomas Cranmer, the Archbishop of Canterbury, influenced her. Catherine believed in the importance of individual faith, the reading of scripture in the vernacular, and the rejection of many Catholic practices, including the veneration of saints. One of Catherine's most significant contributions to religious reform was her role in educating her stepchildren, Mary and Elizabeth, in the Protestant faith. Despite their Catholic backgrounds, Catherine was able to influence them with her beliefs and played a part in shaping their religious identities. Catherine also used her position as queen to protect Protestant reformers at risk of persecution. She provided refuge to religious dissenters and used her influence to secure their release from imprisonment. Her support for religious reform earned her the admiration of Protestant leaders and the gratitude of those who benefited from her protection. Chapter 8, The Threat of Arrest Catherine Parr's religious reforms and advocacy for Protestantism were not without risk. The conservative faction at the court, including some of Henry VIII's advisors, viewed her activities with suspicion and considered her a threat to the realm's stability. One of Catherine's close friends and supporters, an Askew, was imprisoned for her Protestant beliefs. And endured brutal torture but refused to renounce her faith. Upon hearing of Anne's arrest and suffering, Catherine Parr used her influence to intercede on Anne's behalf, pleading with the king to spare her life. 
Despite the danger she faced in doing so, Catherine's intervention likely played a role in and Askew's eventual release. Catherine's actions drew the attention of her enemies at court, including Bishop Stephen Gardiner, a staunch opponent of religious reform. Gardiner and others sought to use Catherine's religious views against her and undermine her position with the king. Chapter 9, The Lamentations of a Sinner Catherine Parr's theological writings, particularly The Lamentations of a Sinner, brought her under increased scrutiny. She openly discussed her religious beliefs and faith journey in this work. She questioned the veneration of saints, the use of Latin in the church, and the authority of the Pope. Her writings were considered radical by the standards of the time and marked her as a Protestant sympathizer. As word of Catherine's religious writings spread, her enemies saw an opportunity to accuse her of heresy. Bishop Gardiner and others conspired to have her arrested and brought before the king's council to answer for her beliefs. Catherine's situation became increasingly precarious, and she knew that her life and freedom were at stake. Chapter 10, Catherine's Clever Defense In 1546, Catherine Parr's fears came to fruition when she was summoned to appear before the king's council to answer charges of heresy. The council was divided, with some members sympathetic to her Protestant beliefs and others seeking her downfall. Facing a difficult situation, Catherine Parr embarked on a strategy of self-preservation. She understood the power dynamics of the court and recognized that the king's favor was her best hope for survival. Catherine approached Henry VIII, humbly assuring him of her loyalty and professing her willingness to submit to his authority in all matters, including religion. Catherine's clever defense had a profound impact on Henry VIII. The aging and ailing king, who had once been known for his uncompromising stance on religious matters, was now inclined toward leniency. Catherine's willingness to submit to his authority and pledge to refrain from discussing religion without his consent moved the king. Henry VIII, who had experienced tumultuous religious shifts during his reign, sought to avoid further instability. He recognized Catherine's value as a stabilizing influence and chose to spare her from the fate that had befallen some of his previous wives. Chapter 11, Catherine's Later Life after her brush with arrest and persecution, Catherine Parr played a role in England's religious and political life. She remained married to Henry VIII until he died in 1547. As Queen Dowager, she enjoyed a measure of independence and continued to promote religious reform. Following Henry's death, Catherine Parr married again, this time to Thomas Seymour, the brother of Jane Seymour, Henry's third wife. This marriage brought her into contact with the young Princess Elizabeth living in Seymour's household. Catherine's influence on Elizabeth's education and upbringing was significant and contributed to the future Queen's intellectual and religious development. Tragically, Catherine's final marriage was marred by controversy and scandal. Thomas Seymour's inappropriate behavior toward Princess Elizabeth and his political ambitions led to his arrest and execution. Catherine was left a widow once more and faced financial difficulties. Chapter 12, Catherine's Legacy Catherine Parr's life was one of remarkable resilience and adaptability. She navigated the treacherous waters of Tudor court politics, survived two marriages to powerful men, and used her position as queen to promote religious reform and protect those who shared her beliefs. Her influence on Princess Elizabeth, who would become Queen Elizabeth I, cannot be overstated. Catherine's emphasis on education, her support for religious reform, and her example of strong leadership left a lasting imprint on the future queen. Catherine Parr's writings, particularly The Lamentations of a Sinner, continue to be studied by historians and theologians, providing insights into the religious debates of her time and her journey of faith. Catherine Parr died on September 5, 1548, at the age of 36, likely due to complications from childbirth. She was buried with full honors at Sudley Castle, where her tomb is a testament to her enduring legacy. In the Annals of History, Catherine Parr, the sixth wife of Henry VIII, is a figure worthy of admiration. 
Her intelligence, religious convictions, and ability to navigate the complexities of Tudor court life make her a remarkable and enduring symbol of a tumultuous era in English history. Her story reminds us of the power of resilience, faith, and intelligence in the face of adversity.